Good morning, beloveds. How are y'all doing today? This is our day. Welcome to Culture and Dining with our day, Aye. Today, I would like to talk to you about how I became Aye Feiju. So you see, I don't have my head wrapped today because I'm talking to you as Karen. Yeah, that's my birth name, Karen. Um, my mother loved, well, there was only American Bandstand, Soul Train didn't exist at this time. So there was a dancer on there that my mother thought was an awesome dancer, and she liked her, and so she named me Karen. I have always liked my name up until the sixth grade, because before that, the only Karen I knew was my kindergarten teacher's daughter, and I love Miss Melton. I felt like I was her child too because my name was Karen. However, in the sixth grade, and this is no shade on anybody, like for real, for real, but as a little black girl in 1970, with all of what had been going on in this country, to have a girl in your class that did not look like you, and her name was Karen too. So there was a level of, who is this girl with my name and she don't look like me? Plus it was like, why does gotta be another Karen? I'm the only one, just me, just me. And then it precipitated after that. When I got to middle school, there were three of us. Oh, Father God, by the time I got to high school, there were seven. Do you know the identity crisis I had? I never knew who was talking to me, if they were talking to me. I went to a school, heck, my my graduating class was over 700. So, <laughs> do you know how many students that is in a school? If one class is 700. So, let's see, when I went to middle school, it was 7th, 8th, and ninth. So yeah, back then when I went to high school, it was 10th, 11th, and 12th, right? So, if you got three grades and they all have 700, yeah, that's over 2,000 students. Imagine walking down a hall and someone says, Karen, and you're walking with the Karen. It got to a point where I just kept walking because inevitably, when I would turn around, they would go, I'm not talking to you, Karen. I'm talking to... And it wouldn't be either of us Karens. It's a Karen further up the hall in her locker. Too much confusion. Well, one day, well, I actually told my mother I didn't want to be Karen anymore. Then one day, uh, I was in ROTC. I don't know if you know what that is. Um, it's reserve officer training in high school. So you do ROTC, you can go into the military if you choose to, and you don't have to go in at a lower rank, you can go in at a little bit higher rank because you were in ROTC in high school and or college. College was even better because your rank went up a little bit more. However, when I was in high school, we didn't wear pants to school. You know what I mean? Does that, can you relate to that? Because I finished school in 77. So we're talking about 72, 3, 4. Yeah, we didn't wear pants to school per se. Um, all the time. You know what I mean? And then it hit where at ROTC, we didn't wear pants at all. It looked like a Catholic girl uniform. That's what they look like. Catholic girl school uniforms. So, um... Just imagine, ugly plaid, green vest, white shirt, tie, pleated skirt. I'm bow-legged. And uh, I have a friend, uh, she's bow-legged too, and neither one of us liked wearing 
when we had to dress for ROTC. We hated it with a major passion. However, <laughs> we made the best of it, right? Ooh, that was a horrible time. You had to wear that skirt. You had to wear pantyhose. I hated pantyhose. Does anybody else like me? Anybody else hate pantyhose? I know I did. But I digress. So Regina and I would tease each other about our bow legs, right? And she told me I had crooked legs, not just bowed, but they were crooked. And so we would tease each other. And somebody overheard our teasing. And so it had become to a point where she would call me crooked. But somebody heard cricket. So it was like, oh, finally, I have a name that nobody else, I can answer to this one. So, okay, now I'm cricket. And <laughs> it's funny because when someone called our house when I was in school and asked to speak to Cricket, my mother didn't blink an eye. She just held the phone up. Who's Cricket? You got a phone call. It's me, Mom. Okay. So for a very long time, that's how I identified was with Cricket because then I knew that if there was another Karen around, I didn't have to trip because... If you didn't call me Cricket, then I know you knew me from elementary school up through middle school. By high school, definitely most people knew me as Cricket. So that helped me have an identity. You know, it's when you are a teenager, it's important to have an identity. You know what I mean? You're going through enough upheaval and craziness as it is. So moving forward, as I began to mature and become more, how do I say this? When African culture and traditions really began to speak to me in my 30s, I want to say. Let me back up just a minute. Seeing as a child. I have always been interested in certain things. In the, I want to say the eighth grade or so, I had a teacher who introduced me because I, I am a avid reader. It is my addiction, uh, has been since I learned to read. So I can't think of the teacher's name. I used to know it off the top of my head, but for some reason her name is not coming to me. That being said, this teacher in middle school introduced me to people like Baldwin, Maya Angelou, Nikki Giovanni, and um, Tazaki Shange, um, just a myriad of um, black writers. So in the midst of that, I started finding some books about African culture tradition. So I was about 15 at the time. So we move forward another 15 years, I'm in my 30s. So this itch to know and learn more about African culture and tradition has just exacerbated by the time I'm 30. So I'm reading African writers, I'm reading African history, um, just anything that I can get to feed this hunger. And then I found out about coins, which took me to a whole nother level and understanding the Nguzo Saba, which are the seven principles and just that all of that resonated with me. And then there came the time when traditional religion no longer served me. It no longer fed me. So I began to search for something that would feed me and also help elevate this thing that was growing inside of me to be closer to my African ancestors. And that's why I changed my name. Yeah. 23 years ago, November the 14th, I changed my name. And so I'm about to be, well, Karen is going to be 63. 
how they pays you will be 23. And I had begun to practice a tradition uh, within the Yoruba culture called Ifa, I-F-A. And when people ask me, what is that? The easiest way for me to explain it so that people can grasp it is to tell them it's very similar to Catholicism in that versus having saints, we have Orisha. So as I began to grow within the tradition, I spoke with my godfather, Lavao um, Gunde, and told him I wanted to change my name. At that point, I had done what they call the first step, and that is to get your warriors and to know what your ori is. You've seen me before talk about the ori, that is your head, your inner guide, your spiritual self. And so in learning those things and having my warriors, my Eshu and my Ogun, my protectors, I then decided I wanted to change my name. Yeah. For my 40th birthday, on my birthday, which makes it even more special, I had a name and ceremony just the way it would have been done had I been born in the culture and had a name and ceremony. So all that went into that, and I'll tell you about that another time. Um, yeah, I had a naming ceremony and celebrated my 40th birthday in that way. So my name is Adepeju, which means the crown is full of value. My initiated name is Ifa Korede which means E5 brings wealth. And then my last name is Oliu Yemisi, which means God honors me. Now, some people question why I did that. But when you are growing in a certain direction, then you want to reflect that in as many ways within your life as possible. At least me, if you understand then give me a woo woo. Um, yeah, I wanted to reclaim my ancestors. That's just the honest truth um, for the most part. I wanted to reclaim my ancestors because my ancestors were stripped of their names. They were stripped of their language. They were stripped of their culture. And as I am embracing these cultures and traditions, then I wanted my name to reflect that. And I know there are people who within the community of consciousness and spirituality that change their names. However, they don't always change them legally. And I did that. I changed my name legally because it was important for that step to be had. When people called me Cricket, okay, Sometimes people will go, that's not your name. Yes, it is. It reflects my indigenous ancestors. Not be animate about that. It's not your business. It's how I choose to define myself, which is one of the principles of Kwanzaa, Kuchi Chakalia, self-determination. And my self-determination was whatever I ask you to call me, that's who I am, right? So, I, that is the reason why I changed it legally. Because when someone says, oh, that's not your name. That's not your legal name. Your mama didn't name you that. I'm like, mm. Hear my ID. Damn, what it say? It's legal, beloved. It's not, I'm not that person who just chooses to wear a name and have people call me that within the community and the culture and the tradition. For me, it was very important for people to call me that because what we were disconnected from is the importance of name. They don't have names like ruler and rice, except for those who take on the colonizers' names. It's the truth, Ruth. Um, so your name is given to you at your birth. 
but your name and ceremony is usually seven, eight days after your birth because sometimes the child does not stay. So, when a name is given, it's usually, um, especially those who are within the practice of Ifa, the Babalawo, the priest, the spiritual uh, leader, is the one who does what needs to be done to find the name for the child. And your name is what is your reminder of who you are, what you come to do, what is your purpose in life, what did God put into you. So Ade pays you. The crown is full of value. The crown is full of value. The crown is full of value. This is my crown. This is my crown. And there's value in it. So that is to remind me the level of value that I have, the level of value that I bring. And to know that God honors me. When someone says my last name, it's reminding me that God honors me. African names help you remember who you are and what you do. Sometimes it's related to how you came into the world. Was it a market day? Was there a war going on? What was happening within your community when you were born? What's happening within your family when you were born? Sometimes a child is given a name because her mother could not have children and she's the first child that Actually, the mother was able to carry to term and be born. There are names that put your um, spiritual guardian to help you remember, like someone whose name is Oshun Bumi, Oshun Funke. That's their guardian spirit, and it talks about. Oshun blessing them, Oshun giving them wealth, Oshun empowering them. Um, if a child's name is uh, Yeye Tunde, that means the mother has returned. If a child's name is Baba Tunde, the father has returned. So does that make sense? Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share my little story today on who I am and how Karen became Ade. So, this is Ade of Culture and Dining with Ade Aye. I hope you have an awesome day. The link is in the bio. So, follow me. Like, share, and subscribe, beloveds. <laughs>